I'm very quickly just going to um, do the next introduction. So those of you who have been at the conference before would know that normally at this stage in the conference I'm looking pretty haggard and frazzled and worried, but actually I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm like carefree and relaxed because as somebody tweeted to me the other day, they said, oh, I'm so looking forward to Mark's summary of the conference that, that Mark has to work so hard to create during the conference, and so am I. Thank you, Mark. I think, I think. So, actually, I was, I was flattered when Mark asked me to do this. He certainly does a remarkable job of it, job of it himself. Uh, I, was also, I was also impressed by the way he embraced diversity in the choice of his successor. <laughs> in that he chose someone with a different surname, but who in every other respect is absolutely identical. And through the last two days, while well, I've been slavishly listening, obviously, to everything that's going on, recording, summarizing, at least three or four people have said to me, oh, you know Mark Carden, he's a really hard act to follow. I hope you're ready for it. Oh, that Mark Carden, gosh, that'll be a difficult act to follow. And I thought, is that really a, is Mark really a hard act to follow? There must be other hard acts. There were other acts that were even harder to follow. So I consulted that bastion of data integrity and transparency, the Daily Mirror. <laughs> and I found out that, in fact, these are historically the hardest acts to follow. So Nelson Mandela and Thabo and Becky, I think, I think you'd agree, that's pretty tough. The Beatles and Wings, I mean, whatever you think about Band on the Run, I think you'd have to say that Wings had a pretty difficult job following the Beatles. Now this one, <laughs> now this one, Sean Collery following, following George Lazenby, I, d I almost didn't put it up because I kind of resented the immediate physical comparisons that people might make between the two, but I'm sure Mark quite likes being compared to Sean Connery. But this one, I think, captures everything about difficult acts to follow, about Mark, and about me. <laughs> so Camilla Parker Bowles, indeed the hardest job following, uh, following Mark. So in reflecting on the conference, I think the first thing I would say is a good time was had by all. And a good time had by all because of the quality of engagement, the quality of conversation, the quality of questions, the quality of presentations. And you know, someone said, I think, earlier today, now this is not a publisher conference, it's not a distributor conference, it's not a researcher conference, it's everybody round this wheel. And I think it's a real testament to everybody in the room that the, the whole conference is, uh, is executed with such, <laughs> with such grace and good humor. And the photographer is excellent at capturing the essence of people. I don't, that's all I have to say. So, my real job is, what is the conference summary? So I thought in the spirit of reproducibility, I'd just steal Mark's slide from last year, and I didn't even have to change the name. So in fact, it is just complicated. And, and looking and thinking about everything that's been said and everything that's been presented, the landscape of everything that goes on inside and outside this wheel is as complicated as it's ever been. But it felt to me like there were two things going on, not just in individuals, but even within individual presentations, debates, and so on. And that is, are you optimistic or are you pessimistic about what the future holds for our ecosystem? It's not our industry, it's not our community. I think it's best described as our ecosystem. Are you half full? Are you half empty? Or if you're a scientist, obviously you're analyzing the way that the glass of water is composed. So which are you? So you could look at the conference and say, I'm absolutely an optimist. The promise of research for life, the promise of open science. I can see societies and society publishers being sustained and thriving. I can see business models evolving to be fair, 
to be transparent, to be accessible, to be affordable. I can see diversity being one of the bedrocks of what we do. I can see early career researchers receiving the support that they need to be successful. I can see our impact as an ecosystem being, being real. Uh, I can see all our work being done to the highest ethical standards. Collaboration will be enabled globally. We'll have open peer review and innovation will be at the heart of what happens in our, in our ecosystem. I could, I could take a more pessimistic view and think there are just too many bad actors in our world. That regulation is going to stifle us, government regulation, funder mandates, whatever they are. That the oversupply, simply the oversupply of papers will strangle us, that OA is unworkable, that smaller publishers and societies are at great, great risk of surviving that funding for OA globally is a big question mark, that only large publishers can thrive, and that can't be good, that we have a reproducibility crisis. And our scientists who are analyzing the glass of water, they care about these things. They care about their career. They care about how it's going to be funded. They care about their impact. They care about collaborating. They care about fairness in the way that their careers develop. And they care about access, both to the research they need and readers having access to the research that they produce. So firstly, all the way through the presentations, I think you can identify moments of optimism and moments of pessimism. Sometimes they're two sides of the same coin, and that's fine. I would say at this point, I don't know if Mark was going to do it anyway, I thought the presentations were uniformly of an exceptionally high level. So if we're allowed to do so, I'd just like to thank everybody who presented for all the hard work that they did. So Jonathan Adams at the beginning gave us a few reasons to be concerned. Most of all that the ecosystem that I've described is under severe threat. Its survival itself is a question mark. And he actually raised many of the themes that became uh, significant throughout the rest of the, of the meeting. Output, impact, measurement, funding. He caused, he, his presentation was certainly quite lively on Twitter to say the least. Other reasons to be concerned, measurement and assessment and assessments are inadequate. Measurements are too few. They're oversimplified, whether it's citation, whether it's impact factor. That assessment is not rigorous. It's not evidence-based. It's not transparent. The women are underrepresented in STEM research, and the leaky pipeline means the women who do enter the STEM environment are leaving it and not coming back that peer review is fundamentally broken. I don't think anybody used the word broken, but is peer review really fit for purpose? Um, is it biased? Is it no, no guarantee of quality? And that journals simply don't matter, that actually what matters are the important units of currency, the author, the data, the article, and you could argue it either way. Luckily, there are reasons to be optimistic. Now, the first one is that we managed a video link with a speaker from 4,237 miles away with no technical issues. So props to the AV team for doing that. In fact, all the way through, you know, I think the, a the AV is, uh, has held up. And anybody that goes to a lot of these, how many times has someone like me stood and said, well, I just can't get this to work? So, thankful that. Other reasons to be optimistic. So, new transformative models for societies. I thought this was, was an exceptional presentation, not just for what it said about the pathway through transition and into flipping and into open, but also about what payment might look like, what the commercial model, what the financial model underneath uh, open publishing might be. Um, and what that might mean, not just for the microbiology society, not just for other societies, but actually for scholarly publishing writ large. That research for life is strengthening research in the global south. And the, the kinds of initiatives uh, that we went through there are, are real, are meaningful, and that there's a high level of engagement. That there is an agenda for greater diversity and transparency based on equality, on equity and justice that technology can enable 
better peer review and AI uh, through measurement, data sharing, improving re reproducibility. There was a whole series of presentations of different pieces of technology, different innovations that may solve some of those problems. How they connect to each other is a different question. So innovation in our industry, in our ecosystem, is happening all over the place. How those things actually connect together, speak together, make things scalable, and make those benefits real, I think is a question still to be answered. And reasons to be optimistic, actually journals do matter. Journals confer value. Journals make the investment in the whole publishing process. Journal brands represent quality. Uh, journals represent investment, particularly in interdisciplinary subjects, that journals actually, actually do matter. So optimistic, pessimistic. So sometimes the best way to flush these things out is with a debate. So we had a debate to resolve some of these issues, particularly around uh, whether uh, journal brand confers quality. And Mike, I think you even tweeted yesterday you'd slightly changed your, not changed, refined your position. Can you tell everybody what you said? Uh, I wish I could find the tweet. You should have asked. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Exactly. I thought that was very helpful. And actually, in the spirit, I mean, that was a great debate. And I think credit to, uh, to, to, to Rick, uh, to all of the debaters. It had, it had a genuine flavor of progress through constructive disagreement. Uh, exactly. Uh, and actually, that's a good thing. And in the end, I think they did agree more than they disagreed. So summary themes then, as you put all that together. Um, so this is my view that perhaps the biggest theme across all of this was how robust, how transparent, how and how fair is the scholarly communications process and are the key players aligned? So we heard a lot about everything from uh, university leaders and managers to funders to government to researchers themselves to journals to publishers. Is there real alignment around what's important? Uh, impact, how do you define it? I'm not sure we ever quite did, but we asked the question a lot. And how do you define it not only as a measure, not only as an outcome, but actually as a public good? Because in the end, openness is about turning research into a public good. Talent, I don't think anyone used expressly the word talent. But how can global colleagues, how can uh, female researchers and early career researchers be better supported? And I would have thought beforehand that open access and open science might come out at the top of this summary theme. But it actually felt n not quite that open access and open science is a given. The pathway to get there is the question, and how confident are we that the pathway embraces everything it needs to, particularly with respect to the values that we co collectively confer on it. Um, and that's the transparency and the fairness, which would leave us collectively with an agenda. But because I've got this, and Mark asked me to do this, and I don't care if the red light goes on, it's not an agenda, it's actually my agenda. And it'd be a few things to think about as we look at those summary themes. So one is innovation. And innovation is all about problem solving. Innovation is successful and it takes a real problem that someone has and it solves it. And I would ask around this circle, where is the innovation happening that solves the kinds of problems that this meeting raised? Transparency, fairness, the robustness of the whole system. And I don't know the answer to that. Global science, are we going forwards or backwards? I mean, does open access and open, and particularly mean that the funding for research from the Global South is going to get ha harder to access and to publish? Does the political context mean we're going forwards or backwards? I'm not sure. Partnership is a big thing. So Chris Banks and Tasha talked about what the Microbiology Society Imperial have done, and I characterize it to them as they were solving a problem that they hadn't created. The problem was actually created elsewhere, let's just say by funders. 
how to get there. Nobody thinks getting to an open world is not a good idea, but they're creating that solution. And communication, simple but important. All the way around this circle, ask yourself the question, do we understand everybody's needs, whatever segment we're in, as well as we always have, better than we always have, or slightly worse? And I'll posit it might actually be slightly worse. So what's the answer then? So what do we do? You'll be pleased to know that I don't have the solution, but I trust you do. But there is one thing before I go that you can do, and that's this. <laughs> to solve these big problems, just make sure that you complete your delegate survey. So I would like to thank, because we don't often get this chance, I would like to thank Mark and his team also on behalf of everybody for organizing such a great event. So thank you guys. Thank you.